So you're thinking about updating the look of the stage at your church. Well, before you do, make sure you watch this video because in it I interview Chad Buckland with Worship Leader Hangout and he shares six steps for a successful stage redesign. My name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, an online resource for innovative and creative church leaders. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church. Be sure to check out the description of this video for show notes and helpful links to related videos as well as resources for your ministry. I recently had the chance to have my friend Chad Buckland on the Churchfront podcast and because we're both YouTubers, we thought it would be fun to actually make a video out of it as well. And on Chad's channel, some of the videos that stand out the most are his videos about church stage design. He's got a ton of helpful tips for redesigning your church stage on a budget. But before you even get into what design you're going to go with, there's a lot of other steps to the process that you want to have in place before you start doing construction or rearranging things and getting volunteers called in. Chad has outlined for us a really great six step process to ensure that your church stage redesign will be a successful one. So keep watching this video, and without further ado, here's my interview with Chad Buckland. Chad Buckland, welcome to the Churchfront Podcast. Hey, what's going on, man? You doing all right? Yeah, man. I'm I'm excited to hang out with uh, Worship Leader Hangout. This That's is right. like so, so much hanging Let's out going Let's on hang over out. here. Lots yeah, hey, it. man. So I, I came across your YouTube channel a couple months back, and uh, love, 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 love what you're doing. Obviously, I mean, if anybody knows me, I'm a huge, like, I'm a huge YouTube nerd and geek. I mean, oh, I me consume too. I consume a lot of YouTube. Like, my favorite, my favorite YouTubes are, you know, Casey Neistat and uh, Peter McKinnon and, um, you know, some of those, like, I don't know, informational YouTube videos. I mean, a lot of inf videos are informational, but Kyrgyzstan, I think, is another good channel. Um, gosh, I could go on all day about these right. channels that I follow, and I just love. And I think YouTube is such a fun platform. So I came across your channel. It's like, hey, Worship Leader Hangout. This is about worship leading, obviously. Uh, so it was fun uh, when we finally did get a chance to connect. We're both sort serving up similar content uh, and, this, and serving you know the similar folks in the worship leading world. Um, and I just love making new friends, um, especially in the online content creation world. So, dude, uh, thanks so much for taking some time to come on the podcast. Let's uh, just begin with uh, when and how did you first get involved in worship ministry? Um, first, I just want to say the same thing. Is thank you so much for allowing me to be on the podcast. I was just honored to meet you and, and hang out with you a little while back, and I'm glad we are actually making this happen. So um, in 2012 or 13, um, a friend of mine, uh, David Hutchinson, he's living in Texas now, we just said, hey, let's uh, get together on Google Hangouts. We went to school together at Lee University, and we said, let's get together and just talk about just what we do, because uh, he was he's a worship leader as well. and. And so we, we talked about a lot of things that you can't necessarily put on camera, but then we were like, man, we got we to gotta record that. You know, there were some things we just ha had to put out. And so we started, uh, we did it on, uh, we filmed it on uh, Google Hangouts, but we said, all right, how are we going to do this in a, in a great way? We didn't have gear or anything like that. So we literally just let it record and let it post to YouTube. It was my, my other YouTube channel at the time. And the, the following year, we did this once a week roughly once a week for about a year or so. And the following year, I just said, you know what, I'm going to brand this thing. Uh, we'll call it Worship Leader Hangout. We started on Google Hangouts, wherever that is now, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. So, uh, and we just started making uh, videos, kind of one-off videos by ourselves and just getting, uh, becoming better creators, but also thinking of the content that we wanted to talk about and put it in a better way that people would actually watch and enjoy. So it actually started almost just like what we're doing now, uh, and, but it's expanding so much into, you know, kind of what we're going to talk a little bit about today with stage designs to just um, exploring different concepts and things. And then also Dave and doing uh, the piano tutorials and, and things like that. So that's yeah. that's kind of where we are now. And, and, you know, we say at the beginning of a lot of our videos is uh, Worship Leader Hangout. Um, Welcome to Worship Leader Hangout, where we talk about many aspects of leading worship and, a lead, and leading a worship team. There's so many things to talk about from technical aspects to 
um, to, you know, how do you talk to a team member about a, maybe an issue they're having? You know, that, those kinds of things, uh, we want to just, we, we want to be open to anything and everybody. I know me and him were just talking the other day. We we're like, all right, who's our tar- target audience? I said, well, A, worship leaders. Uh, B, anybody. I don't care. I want anybody to enjoy our videos. So that's kind of how we approach that. So. That's awesome. How, so how did you uh, personally get, get involved in worship ministry? When, when and how did that happen? So we'll make that, that story as short as we can because it, it starts when I was um, eight years old. And I, I was baptized in, in, my, in my local church. And I just, when I came out of the water, I just felt an immediate call to ministry. I know at eight, it doesn't seem like, you know, eight-year-olds are thinking about that because, you know, we're, we're having Nerf Wars and uh, riding bikes. But uh, I just, I came out of the water. I just said, you know what, I'm called to ministry. Ten years old, I knew I was called to, to music ministry. And I just made, I just did everything I could to make that happen. I was involved in uh, I played saxophone and worship at my church at the time, all the way up through um, high school. I also started uh, playing guitar in ninth grade in, uh, in high school and, and leading worship and youth and different uh, places like that. And I just said, you know, what? I'm going to do everything it takes to become a, a, a worship pastor, or music minister, whatever you want to call it. And I went to Lee University for worship and, and music, and uh, it just it just goes from there. Just like I said, just doing everything I could, being involved and just putting myself in those places. Um, and that's how I became a, a worship pastor and just and even uh, interacting with people like you, other worship leaders, as many as I can. And also another thing is when we, when we started Worship Leader Hangout or when I thought of the idea, I said, you know, there's so much more to this. What can we learn from other worship leaders as well? And so, um, and that's another aspect that, that we do is we, we try to learn as much as we can from other leaders and uh, we go to their place and, and kind of like, you know, what you did a couple weeks ago, uh, learning about lighting. By the way, I sent that video to several of my guys that do lighting. I was like, watch this. Just watch it. It's great. They did a great Thanks. job at Red Rocks. And then thank you for putting that together. It was awesome. So, Th- Thanks, anyway. man. Yeah, that that's probably the favorite video that I've made so far. So um, it, Boomer, Boomer was instrumental in helping with the uh, editing and entertainment factor on that one but yeah dude thanks gotcha, and gotcha. yeah well it's cool to hear your story you'd mentioned that you um went to lee university for folks who think about you know especially if you're if they're a younger worship leader listening to this how would you describe um the impact that you know a school and getting formal education uh in the area of worship ministry at lee impacted kind of who you are as a worship leader today i Now, this may sound strange, but I don't think you need to go to school to be a worship leader. Um, I don't think you need to go to worship school necessarily or to music school necessarily because if God has called you to that area, there's there's other ways you can do that, and a lot of that is uh, through experience. And so, but I went the route because I wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing uh, with music and of course, if they had a worship program, I was going to be involved. You know, I already told you, I just did anything and everything I could. It doesn't mean I'm going to graduate and immediately have a job. No, I mean, it took me eight months to get my first job, and that was part-time making hardly anything. And so, but what I would tell people is, A, to do everything you can in worship when it's offered, um, if it's if you have the time for it. Um, and then, B, also look at other ways to learn music and also to learn worship in general, you know, through maybe even through channels like ours, but also through, you know, there's a, um, a great school of worship in Atlanta called 10,000 Fathers, and I, I haven't done that yet. I thought about doing it, um, but they have an international program that you can do online. You can go there for a solid week, and then you continue for the next uh, uh, six months online uh, per semester. Anyway, I just, I yeah. looked into it uh, late last year. Um, so there's other ways, you know, if you're young enough, you can go to Elevation at their worship school or Hillsong. I mean, there's so many great ways to be involved in worship and, and get the, the training and education you need in that. But also, I would say invest a lot of time and, and money into learning music and, and being a great musician. And I, I think that's so important because when you're dealing and, and interacting with your team, you need to know what you're talking about. Because it, it helps them to know that it comforts them and helps them to know you know what you're doing, especially when you're saying, hey, let's, let's try these changes instead of these for this song. You know, and instead of, you know, relying on 
your musicians, which, you know, they do other things full time and not necessarily music. Some of them might do music, but instead of trying to rely on them 100%, you know, they're, they're kind of looking at you as like, okay, what are we doing? Now we can work together instead of, you may be a great leader, but, you know, not, not knowing music very well can kind of put you in a, a kind of a weird place uh, as a worship leader. So anyway, invest in, in yourself musically and also yeah. get the training in worship in some way. Lee was just, was just one of those things. It, I, you know, a lot of people that I knew um, had gone to Lee or were going to Lee or, you know, graduated, that kind of thing. And, and so it was just a, a known thing in my area. I grew up uh, near Atlanta and it was like the closest worship school, especially at the time. It was, uh, I went in in 2006, graduated 2010. And so some of these other schools weren't as heard of or some of them uh, didn't exist at the time. So it was just, yes, I want to go to school for worship. This is where I'm going. I love Lee. And that's how I ended up there. And I'm so glad I did because it was a, an amazing experience. And I, I wouldn't trade it for the world, for sure. Would I change a few things probably, but I wouldn't trade the entire experience at all so yeah yeah i feel the same way about uh when i went to i went to college at a uh, greenville university and um similar similar probably program and everything and i i also think about worship leader development development in general in that same way where there's like I'd say there's like three different pillars that you need to take care of. One is the pastoral element or slash spiritual element. Two is like the musical competency. And then three is like the leadership administrative area. And like, yeah. I mean, you could divide those up in however many pillars you want, but I kind of see it three areas. And, you know, I think all of us are going to have our one area of strength and it's just making sure that really, but in all three areas, we need to be uh, pursuing um, growth in those. And, and it doesn't, it kind of like, it really depends on who you are and, and what your financial situation is, where you oh, live, yeah. like all those things kind of come into play on, on what's going to work out for you. But great, great advice there. So, uh, the reason I wanted to have you on the podcast, at least for this first time, cause who knows, we, we might have you on the podcast a second time, but for this yeah, episode we'll in particular, it. I wanted to chat about, um, stage design because when I'm looking through your YouTube channel, the videos that really really pop out um f- yeah, to me at least from a from like a viewership standpoint in just in the kind of like intrigues uh curiosity are mm-hmm. your videos on church stage design um oh, without and i doubt. know that when and so when i see that like those videos like are getting trafficked a lot like to me as someone who kind of lives in the online world i'm like wow people really care about this topic so i think there's a lot of folks in the church front community who probably care about this topic um and would love to hear what you have to share about like how do we go about this process of um you know if we if we know that we want to improve uh or freshen up or redo the look of our stage um how do we do that like what's what's a good way to make sure that you cover all your bases that you you just go about the right steps of making sure that happens so um so I'm just going to kind of leave it to you now to kind of walk us through what your process looks like okay so you can kind of go ahead and take it away and um how how do you go about redesigning the, the stage at your church? All right. So first of all, um, don't ask or tell your pastor or anybody in leadership that you're doing it. Um, it's just going to call. I'm just kidding. No, you, you definitely, <laughs> know, right? you definitely Dude, want to have you gotta that be careful. communication. Yeah. Guys like me take that seriously. I'm, I'm okay. totally a uh, ask, uh, ask, what's it? Ask forgiveness later and or permit I do or that, something like yeah. that. I, I do yeah. that when it's appropriate, right? When <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. for sure, like, man, you're going to love this, but yeah. no, oh, give me, but I, I look at it, I look at it in, um, six ish steps. So, okay. um, I would say number one is know your space. So this is going to be, um, the dimensions. And then of course the, the truss and other type of uh, rigging areas you may have, uh, around your stage or on top of your stage or whatever it may be. Uh, you want to know your space really well. You want to know the ins and outs of that. You want to know the, the weight, um, capacity on on your trusses and, and things like that because you want to you want to make sure it's safe and you do things right uh, and and not you know put too much weight on a bar or a truss or a ceiling or especially not a uh, a tile ceiling uh, suspended thing because those don't hold up anything and I, I know there's churches of all shapes and sizes so there's no one thing that you can 
you can do to know a, know a stage because it's all different. So know it. Um, get a tape measure out. You know, look up in the ceiling. See, you know, different places that you can hang things from safely. Um, see where other stuff is already being hung from uh, and just kind of get ideas in that way. Um, this is going to help you tremendously because when you go to actually come up with a, an idea, you, know, you want to know what your, um, what your limits are. Uh, essentially so whether it's uh, you know hanging a design to light up or hanging lights in general you want to know what your your limits are um, number two is uh, draft your idea including measurements um, so what I mean by this is you can draw it out maybe ha maybe you have your stage digi digitally drawn and so you, you're drawing out your idea maybe it's the placement of of your lights maybe it's the placement of a an actual design again like that you're gonna actually put light to um, to brighten up, kind of like what we use a lot here at our church and what our videos have shown. And uh, you want to draft that. So one way that I, I started doing it was, uh, actually first started doing it, I took a picture um, from a little bit further back in the, in the auditorium and, and I blacked out certain areas on Photoshop and I just, I made the design on that picture just to be able to show my team and show other people, say, like, what do you think about doing something like this? Because at the time, we had never, that first video you'll see with the, the vertical, I call it vertical slats, um, that we didn't, we didn't have any, hardly anything. We had like a scrim and a white curtain behind that and some light shining on that. And it just, I was just tired of it. Everybody was tired of it. And I just said, what do you think about doing something like this? And they, they just said, that looks amazing. If I wouldn't have put it on paper like that or put it, drafted that on a picture of our stage, they would have said, I don't know what you're talking about because it's hard to explain some things that are in your mind especially so you want to draft that have something on paper to show and maybe include measurements as well get an idea of what your sizes are going to be um, number three list uh, so list and price materials and tools needed for the job so the last thing we want is to not know how much something is going to be, especially with church and uh, how church budgets are. So we, we like to know everything. We like to know how much it's going to be. Uh, it doesn't matter how, um, how blessed the church is, for lack of better words, or how other church are, churches are with maybe lesser funds. Um, it's You want to have a list of, of things that you need and, and just to kind of keep yourself uh from getting confused and things like that, because lists are very good, at least for me, at least for me, I'll, I'll just say that. Some people can kind of keep everything in their head uh, for the most part, but I like to list and price my materials. So I want to say, hey, this is how much it's going to be. Uh, what do you think about doing this? And then and then my church can, my finance team can come back to me and say, hey, that's going to be great. We can even you know add on a little bit more, or they might come back and say, well, we're we're a little tight this this quarter, so why don't we why don't we just kind of scale it back, or maybe even just push it to another quarter, and we can do you know even more. So that's something you're going to think about. So yeah, my, I agree. Lists lists are super important because yeah, like you just said, you have to you, usually unless if you're forking over the cash to buy this stuff, you're having to get approval from people. So you know, get a Google sheet out or something right. like that. Have a column for you know item name. Have a column for item price. Have a column for link to where you can find that item. Like ha have a column for quantity. Um, totally, totally important to yeah. to make lists for those things. Yeah, and if it's a big job too, some churches want more. They want more quotes. So, you know, if there's one big one-off item, they're going to want a quote uh, for maybe two to three different places. So think about that as well. Go ahead and get all that together because that's just more time spent later going back and trying to redo things. Trust me, I've been there. Um, I've had to get quotes for all kinds of things, multiple quotes for all kinds of things. So just, just do that. Think about lifts, how to get up in your space. I know people don't consider that because a lift rental, if you don't own one at the church, um, can be anywhere from uh, four to seven hundred dollars, depending on how long you you rent it, or more than that if you need it for more than one week. So, um, just some which things is to another think about. reason. Um, which is another four, reason to, to like really. I was gonna say that's just another reason to really like 
plan ahead, right? Because if you're going to have to get a lift yeah. and be like, okay, well, we only want to get a lift for one day. It's like, okay, we got to make sure all these things are, are oh, here do. and they're ready to go. Because um, that's stuff where like if you're not organized and prepared ahead of time, you're going to you're gonna waste money on, on you stuff. You really are. And, and maybe even at the me- in the meantime, like maybe think about, hey, we're going to have this lift. Do we need to arrange uh, some of our lighting and stuff like that while we're at it? You know, Or what other things can we do to maximize the time with this, this tool that we'll have? I think about that all the time, and anytime I redo my background or some lighting on the stage, I always think about other things I can use with the uh, do with the lift. Like maybe my my front lighting is just a little bit off and not exactly the way I want it, or maybe I watched a church front video and I feel totally terrible about you know maybe some of my other lighting, and I'm like, okay, I gotta I gotta change that. So. Go ahead and write that down so I don't forget. But no, I'm just kidding. But uh, so, yeah, other there's yeah. tons of other things. We were even thinking about that. Uh, I know the head of our finances was like, hey, we're, we're renting a lift for another job at the church. Do you need it? And I, I said, hey, that would be great. Yeah, let's let's get it in here for a couple hours. I, I could adjust a few things. So, I mean, you, if you especially if you're if you communicate what's going on, you can it'll help you in the long run. Uh, number four, talk to your team about your ideas and see how they can contribute. Um, one little side note I said here is uh, you may be surprised um, by any hidden skill sets um, people on your team may have. So look, let me just tell a quick story. I I didn't know that one of my, my, my team members was a, a contract painter. Um, he, he just, I knew he was a contractor in a way, but I didn't know he, uh, painting was a part of that. I should have, but I didn't know painting was a part of that. And so he said, hey, uh, just buy the paint. I'll paint the whole thing. And what we were painting was our entire back stage area behind. We don't have like a backstage, but we have like a back wall that our stage is up against. He painted that entire thing and on the sides um, for nothing, just because he loves the church and wow. uh, loves the team. and. Um, him and his son came in and, and got it done, and I mean, it, it looks amazing. And so, so things like that, you never know what those team members are going to be able to do, and you never know how much time they're going to be able to spend. I had a team member uh, for two sets ago. He wanted to. He he was like, "Man, I'll give you all week. Let's do it." And so we we built the design. We we did everything all week together. It took us four days. Me, him, and several others. Uh, you know, uh, intermittent throughout the week, but. He was with me the entire time, and I was so appreciative of that, but I wouldn't have known if I wouldn't have talked to my team and communicated the ideas. And, and other times, mm-hmm. uh, your team members can give you ideas that you didn't think of before, and yeah. that should be an obvious thing, but sometimes it's not. You think, yeah, I love this design. We're, we're doing this. I'm not thinking about anybody else or anything. And like that just that's very narrow-minded, and it can, it can close you in, whereas if you, th- if you say, Here, here's an idea. What do you guys think? People are gonna people are gonna love it or hate it or just say, look, hey, what about doing this? And you're like, oh my goodness, that looks so much better than what I've originally uh, planned to do. Or that's I love that idea. Let's do it next time. Or you know, you just never know. So include yeah. people. Include people. Um, yeah, I'm I'm like the least handy guy in the world when it comes to any type of carpentry and building things. Like I can, I'm a tech geek. Like I can figure out tech stuff. Like and make computers talk to each other and do stuff. But man, when it comes to like con- constructing stuff or stage elements, I have to reach out to, out to other people um, who who know what they're doing because I would just chop my hand off or something like that if I were trying to build stage sets. So that's a great word, especially the whole insight thing. Because you're right, there's like there's people who go to your church who volunteer who are smarter than you in a lot of other ways because they just maybe they're engineers or they're full con- full time contractors or whatever, and they'll bring things to the table that we yeah. we just had no clue. So I I love that point. And sometimes they'll think of things, uh, maybe safety issues or or other things, maybe rigging uh, ideas that you, you're like, oh, I did I didn't even know. I mean, it, it's you, you would be surprised what they can bring. Yeah. Um, another uh, f- number five, one thing not to forget or, or to remember as you're uh, planning is to assemble uh, your building and installation team and schedule the installation. So uh, one thing you can run into with churches is um, is other events happening at the church. Um, I know a lot of churches are multifunctional uh, facilities. They have you know all kinds of things going on all the time. Um, maybe be mindful of uh, what's going on as far as your your sermon series and and how. The, that change may affect that, so you want to you want to collaborate with your pastor and other creative leaders if your church is uh, you know much larger and you have that, and and so 
um, you just want to be you want to be mindful of these things and and go ahead and get on the schedule. Think about okay, if we start on a Sunday afternoon after our weekend services, and maybe we can push to Thursday or Friday, and we have plenty of time to turn everything over and. We're back to Sunday and, no, you know, we didn't skip a beat. So that's another thing to plan with your schedule is you you, re, you don't want to go over Sunday, uh, meaning I don't want to start on a Monday and end on, like, the next Tuesday. That just – that's not pretty. People don't no. pe- people don't like to see that. So always start on a Sunday or Monday and end before the weekend. And as long as you plan and do things the right way uh, – You'll be able to do, you'd be surprised what you can do in a day, let alone four to five days. So just think about that. I mean, you guys probably set your your stage up. How long did it take you guys at your church? Uh, for for our, our church to set it up every Sunday morning, um, we do it from 7, 8. We get there at like 7 a.m. And then usually the stage is set and ready to go. The band is practicing around 8.15. So it's really, a, our setup is about an hour and hour and fifteen minutes, hour and a half if there's glitches. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, so you, it's, so you guys set up every week. Yeah, we do. Yeah, because we're at we're meeting at a Green Mountain High School called Green Mountain High School. So our, you know, this conversation too. I mean, that's something we can think about. Maybe we can talk about once you get through the the final step here. But like, yeah, sure. Being at a church plant, I'm a set up and tear down church. So there there is elements to like. I have people helping me every week where we really are setting up a stage we are um but you know for us we don't have as much um you know we don't do like set redesigns we kind of have our set our set kind of already set up and ready to go um the way it is with trusses and a wide screen um and it's nice and flexible that way because we can kind of get the look but i don't know i think as someone as a at a church plant there's ways that maybe there are some easy, quick ways that we could add some elements maybe on special weekends um, to just kind of, yeah, add, add different aesthetic elements uh, to right. it. And the other thing I was thinking too is when you're scheduling out uh, your setup day, you know, there's no reason you couldn't um, create a new a planning center plan for it, right? And Absolutely, then, yeah. You know, yeah. outline what the day is going to look like. Then you can schedule, put everybody's emails in there so then they can get notified and make sure they show up at the right time. Planning center is great even for things other than worship Absolutely. services. Yeah, yeah, you can, um, you, even on the same, I mean, obviously on the same account, uh, mm-hmm. you can just set up another service and call it setup. And yep. I mean, you can use those services uh, for anything. Um, I've contacted Planning Center about making a, a new song playlist, and I use a ser- I actually use a service as a new song playlist um, yeah. to to throw in some new songs and, and send that to my people so they see and know what to practice uh, throughout the next month or so. Um, and they said, "Hey, we'll look yeah. into that." <laughs> so uh, th- that was yeah. hey, that's good for me. Um, yeah. Number six, this, uh, the last one, uh, really important, probably the most important, is remember to have fun and feed your team. Yes. You'd be surprised what a little bit of pizza will do. It'll give them energy. They'll create better. They'll get things done faster if they're not hungry. Um, and they'll love you more. So, and that, hey, what can we yeah. b- ask for? Pizza, and then if you're feeling really generous, you could get them the uh, the holy manna from heaven, Chick-fil-A. That's right. you know? That's right. Yeah, Chick-fil-A. Well, if you do multiple days... Uh, then yes, you want pizza, Chick Fil A, Chinese, or oh, there you go, yeah, you know whatever else, yeah. So awesome. Th- so uh, I mean, you know, those things are great. You, you need to have a plan. That's really important. I think uh, another really important element to this, I would just kind of layer on top, is to remember to to use what you have to the best of its ability. When we changed our, our design for the first time, I mean, we the church. I came to the church. I was here for a year, and I or almost two years and I was ready to change everything and they hadn't changed anything for three, four years hmm. before, before that. So I, I just had to use what we had. And then I also used a material called Coroplast um, that I, I learned about coming to this church. And I just said, I'm going to use what we have. And I, I, I had to arrange lights in weird ways and shoot them, you know, in directions that just didn't necessarily make sense or it wasn't exactly the way I wanted to because but I just had to use what I have had at the time uh, until I was able to get more because that just what that's going to do is your your church, your finance team, your pastor, whoever is going to look at that and say, you know what, he's using what we have as a church to the to its max capacity or to the best of its ability. That's either going to def- 
going to fail soon or I, you know, as far as like the, the mechanical aspects of that, um, or they may think, um, you know, I just, we want, we need to, to fund that because that's, you know, that's enhancing our church or that's enhancing you know, the, the total aesthetic of what's going on. So you just, you just never know how that, just that one thought will, will affect the, the people in your church um, or in the, and the team, the, the finance team and the pastor yeah. um, to want to fund that even more and, and put more into whether it be lighting or, uh, you know, design in general, um, or anything else for that matter. I mean, you know, using, uh, the, in- the instruments that you have to the best of its ability, you know, it just, mm-hmm. just cause, just because it's not the best doesn't mean that you can't use it because one day you're going to be able to upgrade that. And so always have that mindset is I'm going to use this. I'm just going to wear it out, uh, you know, as best as I can. I mean, if, if you have the funds to replace it, go for it. But until then, just, just, you know, use it like you mean it. So anyway, so that's yeah. kind of, I like to layer that on top and I end just about all those uh, stages on videos that way, because it, it I, I feel like that's really important. God looks at that and says, you know what, he's, you know, he's responsible with, with the little that I'm giving him. I'm going to give him so much more. And yeah. I, I believe that a hundred percent. So that's where that it comes from. truth. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes when you're, when you are operating with a little bit, I think it actually demands more out of out of you you have to learn more you have to become better you know like that's sometimes the worst thing that can happen to you is to be landed in a place where you have unlimited resources because i think it it and it just kind of forces you to not uh, be innovative and and to learn learn things that you never would have to and that's that's one thing now i look over like my past like 10 years in ministry for the most part i've been at churches with like very limited resources um uh, when it comes to worship budgets and stuff like that and it's forced me to have to think of like more creative less expensive ways to achieve yeah. uh the the same or or the, the similar results that, that i see at a church with a multi-million dollar budget right um and again I'll, like again I'll, I'll be blunt about this too it's like i think if a worship leader, if you're serving at a small church and you're trying to figure out innovative ways to overcome these challenges, like you are learning these skills that folks at places with unlimited resources or very well, wealthy resources, like they're just not learning. So, yeah. I mean, in the end, I think you're better off. So then when you are in a place with more resources, you're going to be able to steward those really well. So right. that's that's just like my own little uh, hobby horse thing that I get on no, about. Absolutely. It kind of you know, it makes you it makes you more creative. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, just to, to add on as well is at my internship, they didn't have anything. It was it was a uh, you know a small town um, Baptist church. They didn't have any kind of special lighting or anything like that. So I wanted to do something a little bit more special for uh, for a Christmas event that we were doing. So I took colored bulbs, just the you know the color spiral bulbs that you get you get from Lowe's. I put them in lamps. I reversed so I and I put them near the wall. I reversed the shade and. I think I actually got some tinfoil, put it down inside of the shade and, and, you know, just push that light as best as I could on the back wall and did like, uh, some different colors and it just, it, it looked pretty good, especially for, uh, to be some bulbs and, you know, tinfoil. And I had, it's how we come, do, it's how we do church over here in Tennessee. That's right. With bulbs and, so, and tinfoil. That, that, I mean, it, it, hey, this was as Tennessee as it gets. And yeah. I had people come to me and say, hey, that looks so great. I mean, yeah. how did you how did you do that? I was like, you don't want to you don't want to see it. You don't want to. <laughs> but they they loved the way it looked. I mean, some of them were like, we we should leave that. I was like, well, you, if you're going to leave it, let's just go ahead and perp, get some purpose built lights for that. But yeah, yeah it, it was it was really funny. They re, they really liked it. You know, at the end of the day, that's that's what it mattered. And they couldn't see the the lamp or the 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 shade or anything all they could see was the light because of a like a back wall uh, against you know it was like a choir loft you know some oh, kind yeah. of old church yeah. so you couldn't actually see the the lamp itself so it it was it was really nice uh, and by lamp and you know there's lighting guys like well, what do you mean by lamp like I'm talking about a lamp like mm. what you put on a table beside a couch not the not the bulb itself the, they couldn't see the bulb either so anyway yeah. Yeah, no, that's 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 awesome. And uh, um, uh, one other question I have for you: How do you get your ideas for what when you want to do a stage design? Like, how do you know? Man, I just where do you find your inspiration for that? I I, I really I just look and I, I look I like to look at it as, as many stages as I can, um, and sometimes I just think 
I think about the, the shape of our, our space and I think, okay, how... I just kind of start crafting things in my head, but if I see something I like better, it's a lot of times I'm just like, okay, I'm looking at a picture. How do I translate that picture into actual material and to be able to put that on my stage? That's what I did last time. Um, two times before that, I did. I mean, I didn't see that design until somebody showed me on the front of a uh, like a, a gear magazine. They're like, hey, look how close this looks to our our design. I was like, oh man, that's. That's great. You know, it, it was just mm -hmm. extremely close. The last one we did, I saw um, some. I saw a. It, it was basically this. These were one by one uh, coroplast tiles that we spaced by one foot on a piece of paracord. I saw something very, not. I wouldn't say exactly the same because it, it, it definitely wasn't, but it was similar, and it made me think of this idea. I was like, how would I make glitter? It almost looked like glitter was layered behind our stage and hmm. so um so anyway i just thought of the, the you know the idea of paracords you know very strong uh we can we can let core plast sit on on a, a zip tie hanging from that and and of course it won't sit level you know just kind of angle to whatever side's heaviest and hopefully hopefully believe it or not i didn't even i didn't draft this one at all i just said hopefully it'll look good let's make it dense let's light it and man, it, it's probably one of our better uh, designs. I, I, I wish we actually reversed the one we did now, the last time, and did this one. This because just because of different elements on our stage. But hmm. so I just I, I think of I look at things. I look at stages. I, I do you know you could scroll through just about every church on in, on Instagram and see their stage, just how they're doing things. If you like what you see, just try to do it yourself and try to come up with the idea to do it. I think the best thing to do is you can contact them, but I think one of the best things to do is try to try to fashion that or, or, or come up or build that on your own um, because that's going to that's gonna get those gears turning in your head on actually how to do something a, a little more um, uh, original in the future. So, so try to Think of those ideas and how. Okay, how do they how do they rig that? Well, I, I have no idea. I, I got to figure out how to do it myself. And so, yeah, you can call them, see how they did it. But I would. It's so much more fun for me to try to do it myself and figure it out. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, this is this is such awesome advice. Yeah, because I know a lot of people just get stuck with like, ah, how do I even find the ideas? So it's like, <laughs> just go. Yeah, Instagram, this wonderful little app on your phone. You can go like search different churches, or I know there's isn't there a website called Church Stage Design Ideas? Uh, yes, yeah, something there, like there that. Is. You know, yeah, just Google it. I'm sure that'll come up. You know, we'll you find stuff there as well. But um, yeah, just visit. Maybe visit other churches in your area too, if if you know. And like, like you said, it's like you can you can call them up. You can kind of also make yourself try to think. Okay, how might they be doing that? Um, I bet the more you know, the more you do it, just the more you'll you'll understand the process and you'll you'd be, be able surprised. to see how people can how yeah you'll be able to figure out how they're achieving those yeah. looks. So you'd be surprised how how easy some of it is and how. Like yeah. as, as soon as they tell you, you're like, oh, it's that yep. simple. Yep, yep. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Chad. This was a really, really valuable conversation, and you just share lots of valuable insight on like that six step process of here now now i feel like i know how to go do a church uh, church stage redesign i don't think i'll be really I, I, again at my church plant i'm not really doing uh complete stage redesign since we're setting up into, every no. every week is a stage redesign at my yeah. church but but if you, uh, you know if you yeah. have enough lighting man you i i want to get to a place where we're designing with lights and okay. until then i yeah. have to you know shapes or or where it's yeah. at so but yeah yeah no, that's awesome, though. So um, if folks want to kind of uh, follow you, keep up with what you're up to, where's the best place for them to do that? Right now, it's uh, just uh, search Worship Leader Hangout at YouTube. It's youtube.com forward slash Worship Leader Hangout. Um, we also have Twitter. Uh, we are uh, WL, WL Hangout. Um, nice. Uh, on Twitter. And uh, that's really it right now. Um, more things in the works, but just go subscribe to us on, uh, on YouTube. Yeah, and don't forget to hit that notification bell, like That's I right. tell you guys about my my YouTube channel too. But yeah, the, YouTube's great, but some reason when you subscribe, you don't see everything unless if you hit that notification bell. So That's right. Um, cool. Well, thanks so much for your time, Chad. Keep up the great work, um, and I, I look forward to future content on your YouTube channel. Man, me too, and I look forward to, to yours as well. I really appreciate you having me on today. 
I hope you enjoyed my interview with Chad Buckland of Worship Leader Hangout. Make sure you click the link in the description to subscribe to his channel and check out all the cool videos he has for you. If you found this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button, leave some love below in the comments, share this video with your other friends in worship ministry, and don't forget to subscribe to the Church Run channel so you can receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church.